Welcome to the second edition of This Month in Competitive Overwatch, the show where I get you caught up on everything that's been going on in, well, the competitive Overwatch community. September was an eventful month in the world of Overwatch as the Open Division and Contender seasons came to a close, while the Overwatch World Cup had its remaining three group stages, and the Overwatch League teams haven't been quiet either. In this video, I will be going over developments in the Overwatch Open Division, Contenders, the World Cup, and finally the Overwatch League itself. If there is a certain section that you'd like to skip, just look in the pinned comment of this video where I provided timestamps for each section. Also, keep in mind that I will be only going over news that has been confirmed by official sources. With that in mind, let's get going. Over the course of the month, all regions of the Overwatch Open Division have come to a close, with each region sending their top four teams to compete against the bottom four teams of the previous contender season in their respective seasons. This season is especially interesting as it is the first time Academy teams like GGEA and British Hurricane have been relegated. It'll be an interesting matchup for these young and unproven teams. Unfortunately, there is so much Open Division to go through that I don't know enough about it myself to give you an in-depth look at the teams. I can, however, tell you what the lineups are for Contenders Trials Season 3. Here is North America, South America, Europe, China, Australia, Pacific, and finally Korea. Good luck to everyone participating. In Contenders, all there really was were a couple of playoff brackets to wrap up, so let's quickly take care of that. Teams like Fusion University and Brazil Gaming House continued to prove their dominance in their region with landslide victories that led to repeat titles. France reigned supreme in Europe as Eagle Gaming took a 4-1 victory over Angry Titans after upsetting Giganti into semi-finals. Finally, after a fairly mediocre group stage, Talon Eastwards took the crown in Pacific. Congrats to everybody, as well as to Sydney Drop Bears in Australia, Lucky Future Zenith in China, and Runaway in Korea. We'll see you all in Season 3, and maybe even Overwatch League Season 2. In September, the Overwatch World Cup group stages in the United States, Thailand, and France took place. As far as the United States group stage, they went exactly as expected. The US and Canada casually swept everyone else's side on their way to punching their tickets for BlizzCon. We saw a good amount of fight out of Brazil, and by taking a map off of USA, they proved that their region can hang with the best. USA vs Canada, however, was one of the most hyped up events of all the four group stages. Not only was it a battle for North American supremacy, but it was also a civil war in the Dallas Fuel coaching staff as Arrow from America took on Jane from Canada. In the end, Arrow proved why he is the head coach when America took a 3-1 victory over the Canadians in a heart-pounding match to take the number one seed. If only we can say France had a match like that. They tried with the France vs UK match, but it just didn't work. France was just head and shoulders above everybody, disregarding a 5-map nailbiter against Germany, while the UK took a firm second place. There really isn't much else to say. Visility did his best to carry the Netherlands and took them to third place, but it just wasn't enough. UK and France are going to BlizzCon, and it wasn't even close. Now, Thailand, though, was close. Thailand was legitimately the one group stage that was an unknown for me, and it lived up to its expectations. It was the only group stages that didn't fall into this clear-cut pattern, 5 wins, 4 wins, 3 wins, 2 wins, 1 win. It really looked like any team could take any series. China, the team that went 5-0, didn't look as immortal as other number one seeds had as it was repeatedly forced to five games. In the end, it came down to the experience of Sweden, the regional all-star power of Australia, and the dark horses in Denmark, all fighting for the second spot. All three teams went 3-2 over the course of the event, and was the only group that came down to the final match of the weekend, with Australia taking a map out of China in order to take their place at BlizzCon. These six teams will join South Korea and Finland at BlizzCon in early November. What do I think about the teams and their matchups? Check out my video on the screen right now where I talk about just that. Almost every Season 1 Overwatch League team made some sort of move this month, so I'm going to go through them all in alphabetical order by team. The Boston Uprising announced the release of Mistakes a few days after their initial cut a few days earlier. Mistakes is a great player who stepped up when his team needed him most and was an instrumental piece of the Uprising Cinderella story in Stage 3 last season. I hope you can find a good home elsewhere. 
The Dallas Fuel announced that they had re-signed their entire roster for Season 2, except Coco, who will be moving to an assistant coaching role, and Chips High, who will be entering free agency. Both of these guys have had long and successful careers, and I hope that it can continue for them. The Florida Mayhem have been especially active this month in their announcements. First, they announced to be dropping their entire roster, except Saya player, Awesome Guy, and Tavik. This meant letting talented players like Manitan and Logix go, but the Mayhem wasted little time in starting to reform their ranks, acquiring Zephyr, the backup off-tank for the Dynasty, promoting Hagapun from Mayhem Academy full-time, and half-promoting Apply as well, placing him on the league's first ever two-way contract. It will be interesting to see how the Mayhem uses Apply, as well as how all the other Overwatch League teams decide to take advantage of two-way contracts. The Houston Outlaws let go of some of their least utilized players this month, letting Fact Fiction explore free agency while Clockwork moved to a coaching position and Mendo became an affiliated streamer. In my opinion, none of these people were being used much as players and have all been put into places where they can succeed in the future. It was then announced in one of the bigger announcements of the month that the Outlaws would be acquiring the DPS player Dante from the Shock, seeming to finally fill their giant tracer-shaped hole and all it cost them was an Academy main tank. The Outlaws have already made some necessary changes this offseason, which I am very happy with because I was afraid they would simply settle for the mediocrity they had last season. I can't wait to see what the Outlaws will do in the rest of the offseason. The London Spitfire have been quiet all season so far as players were concerned, but the coaching staff is seeing quite a bit of renovation as the London Spitfire announced Coach815 as the newest head coach who has experience coaching MVP Space and Contenders Korea and many, many years of experience in other esports like Heroes of the Storm and StarCraft. Time will tell if he will be able to maintain that spark that the Spitfire found to win the inaugural season of Overwatch League. The LA Valiant were the last team to seemingly trim down their dead weight, releasing Dumlocked, Finzi, Verbo, and their assistant coach Grim Reality, all four of whom saw little to no gameplay in the second half of Season 2. A week later, the Dynasty announced that their backup main tank, Kuki, would be transferring to the Valiant. Kuki is likely an improvement of a backup over Numlocked and isn't expected to take the starting spot from Fate, but we didn't really expect him to be able to compete with Miro, so I guess time will tell. The Philadelphia Fusion announced the releases of Shadowburn, Dayfly, and Joe Meister. Again, sad, but understandable given the three were barely being played at all. However, Elk, the main support for Fusion University, was promoted to the main roster. Will he be able to compete for Neptuno's slot? This month, the Shock finally did what everyone was expecting them to do for the past three months by finally moving Rascal from Energy Esports to the main team. I mean, how could they not? Even with limited playing time from the Spitfire and the Fuel, Rascal proved himself to be an Overwatch League level DPS player and it's great to see him get another chance on a roster. Unfortunately, that caused a bit of a logjam for the two starting DPS slots on the Shock, with Rascal, Architect, Baby Bay, Sinatra, and Dante all considered to be starting level players. The Shock started to clear this by sending Dante off to the Outlaws as previously mentioned in return for Smurf, the main tank for GGEA, Houston's academy team. While GGEA got relegated in Contender, Smurf is still considered to be a top 3 main tank in Contender's NA, and may challenge Super as a Korean counterpart to Choi Hobin. The Seoul Dynasty trimmed the fat in a different way by transferring players to other teams, like the aforementioned Zephyr to the Mayhem and Kuki to the Valiant. This doesn't give the Dynasty much in terms of backups if things go wrong, but maybe they're trying to follow the London Spitfire formula with just 8 players this time. There's still a lot of offseason left to go though. The Shanghai Dragons announced the release of most of their team, with Gaguri, Fearless, and Dia being the only three that remain. Anything less than that after an 0-40 season wouldn't have been enough to change the course of this franchise, so good on the Dragons for making the cuts that were necessary. They also seem to be trending in a good direction when they announced Blue Haas as their new head coach, who was the coach of Cloud9 Kongdu pre-Overwatch League had recently coached Kongdu Panthera to a second place finish in Contenders Korea. I'm excited to see who he picks up to round out this team and give the Dragons new life going into Season 2. The Overwatch League Washington DC team is the only expansion team to announce acquisitions so far, with Kate from LNL as general manager, Wizard Hyung from NYXL, Avala from Metabellum, and MKL from LNL as coaches, and Janice, the backup main tank from the NYXL, as their first confirmed player. They look to be off to a good start, but the other Overwatch League expansion teams have definitely been making moves of their own behind the curtain, and I can't wait to find out who will be joining us in the Overwatch League in the future. And that will just about do it. You are now completely caught up in the competitive Overwatch community going into October. What's next? F5 season, that's what. 
We are now right in the middle of the offseason and still have a month to go before the BlizzCon Overwatch World Cup Finals, but Overwatch League Free Agency is finally open to all teams on October 9th, so all we can do is hope that the teams give us some juice to discuss while we wait. If they do, you bet I'll be talking about it along with the rest of you. But for now, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, but until next time, don't get tilted.